Well, welcome everyone. Glad to see so, members, so many members of the university community here. It's a, certainly a great day for UNL. Uh, this process began almost a year, I guess a little more than a year ago, when uh, Chancellor Perlman announced that he would be retiring at the end of this academic year. Uh, it's an exciting time because UNL is on, a progress, is on a, uh, the right trajectory. Uh, we're really moving um, uh, in a very positive way, and I'm excited about where we are. And so uh, lots of people have said, well, this year has taken a long time. Uh, but we had to make certain we selected the right person uh, that could come in at a really special point in the history of this institution and move it forward. And so we spent a good bit of time. We had, had lots of people helping. I'd like to personally thank the members of the uh, Chancellor Search Advisory Committee. If those people are in here, could you just wave your hand and let's, let us see who you are. Chris, I see you in the back, wave your hand. Uh, thanks to all of you. A special thank you to Sue Sheridan who chaired the committee. Uh, thanks to the many Nebraskans, uh, the many faculty, staff, and students who have participated along the way in this process. Uh, leadership matters. I think we've taken the time necessary. We selected the right person. Uh, I'm excited to announce who the next chancellor is, but before I do that, I'd like to ask Sue to come forward and just say, uh, make some quick remarks. Sue. Thank you, President Bounds. This is a very exciting day indeed. I was very honored when invited to serve as the, of the chair of the advisory committee um, because I knew what a big undertaking and an important task this would be for our university. I was very honored to help represent the faculty and lead a very talented group of stakeholders in this process. In talking with all of the candidates that came to campus, it was clear that they recognized the exceptional opportunity that this position affords. People both within and outside of UNL, across the state and across the country, can see our momentum and are excited to be a part of it. I'll add my thanks to Chancellor Perlman, whose leadership has been an important part of that momentum. The search committee brought together many unique perspectives, many uh, interesting ideas, and I want to echo President Bounds' appreciation for their service. Serving on the search committee was a very significant time commitment, and these individuals approached this very important task with responsibility, thoughtfulness, dedication, and a keen focus on what is best for UNL and our collective future. It's very clear to me and to the entire committee that the individual who emerged from this process has an impressive resume and an inspirational vision for our future. We're very excited to have this person on board and to look forward, we look forward to their leadership. We're especially excited about the ability to work with this next leader, shoulder to shoulder, to move the university forward. I trust that my colleagues across UNL are as excited about this selection as we are. So thank you again to everyone for participating and engaging in this very important process. Uh, it's been an honor serving in this capacity, and I'll turn it back over to President Bounds. Thank you, Sue. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the next chancellor of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, Dr. Ronnie Green. Ronnie has served UNL since 2010 in the role of Vice President for Agricultural and Natural Resources and Vice Chancellor of the Institute of Agriculture and Natural Resources. Since last year, he has also held the title of Interim Senior Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. In his time here, he's done great things for UNL, impressive momentum at INR, strong connections with students, faculty, staff, donors, policymakers, farmers and ranchers, and many others. Uh, that he is held in high regard was confirmed to me by the stakeholders' feedback I received in the weeks following his campus 
and by the generous applause that you just provided him. Uh, Ronnie is certainly well positioned to lead UNL. I am delighted that Ronnie's wife, Jane, and their four children could be here today for this special announcement. So at this time, uh, let me once again introduce you to your next Chancellor, Ronnie Green. Congratulations, Ronnie. You know, it's um, when you have moments in your life like this, you try to anticipate what the words are going to be in your mind and in your heart uh, when they happen. And I've tried to think over the last several days as we've led up to today what those words would be. And uh, it's, it's kind of like most things in life, you know, you don't really know till you get there. So in the last hour, spending time with our family in the back, um, you know, the words that come to mind for me are eager, excited, energized, enthused, grati you know, gratitude, blessed, thankful, and that there is huge momentum at this university that lies ahead. I want to first thank Hank, uh, President Bounds, for his confidence in appointing me to this position and for the Board of Regents and their confidence as we move forward here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I'm looking forward to working with Hank and our, my fellow chancellors on the other campuses to further our mission and build this university in the future. I wanna just start by thanking Harvey Perlman, our outgoing chancellor, who as you know has served this university over 16 years in that role. And what you may not know is that he has been in Lincoln, Nebraska, at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln since 1959, when he came here as a student. And all but a few years of that time, he was here in Lincoln. He, he went off to my home state of Virginia for a few years, to the University of Virginia. Harvey has had a huge impact on this campus. Uh, we can't even measure what his leadership has meant. And I'd ask you to give him a round of applause for a wonderful leadership. Team. The University of Nebraska-Lincoln is a fundamentally good land-grant university. We're known around the world in a number of areas of strength. This is a comprehensive research university that is a top 50 public research university. But my belief is, and as I peer out into the next decade ahead, and we think about reaching the quarter century mark now in this 21st century, that our best days are ahead of this university. You know, I, I tried to think of an analogy to use, and some of you that know me well know that I love music, and I like to sing. You may, you may I don't know if I'll become the singing chancellor or not, but <laughs> just to forewarn you. But, but I, I thought of this song in Les Miserables that my daughter Kelly and I got to perform in a number of years ago called I Dreamed a Dream. Remember that song that Susan Boyle made so famous a few years ago uh, from out of nowhere, the Scottish singer? And you know, when we dream a dream about this university and we dream where we can head and what the possibilities are ahead for us, more students, I talked about that in the campus visit at some length, we're going to be a bigger university in the next 10 years, we're going to serve more students and more needed students, we're going to do that more effectively we're going to graduate them faster and get them out into the workforce faster. And we're going to become not only a member of the Big Ten, which was a huge accomplishment of the last five or six years of this university, but we're going to become a distinctive member of the Big Ten Conference. Distinctive in ways that matter to Nebraskans. Distinctive in ways that lead the world in areas that matter to Nebraskans in research and creative activity in education and translating that out to the public. That's what a land-grant university does, like we are. So our best days are ahead of us. And what I would ask you to do is I would ask our UNL Global family to roll up our sleeves, 
to work hard like Nebraskans do so that we can grow this place, we can make it flourish, we can make it thrive. And instead of when people fly over Nebraska, they think of us as a flyover place, the light that is here, that the world knows of what we're doing, will draw people here. And it will be a distinctive university that we will serve the state through. Again, Hank, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, I'm so glad my family is able to be here today. Uh, we scrambled to get our oldest son, Justin, here from D.C. early this morning. Uh, so you'll get a chance to meet them. Uh, we are very proud of the fact that we're now working on our 14th UNL degree in our family. <laughs> so hopefully that tells you how much we value this place, how proud we are to be in Nebraska. There is indeed no place like Nebraska. Go Big Red. Now, we would welcome a few questions from the, uh, the audience or from the media here um, for the next few minutes. So is there a question that we might address from the crowd? Yes. Congratulations, first of all. What's the biggest challenge? My name is Owen Jensen with 1011 News yes, here in Lincoln. What's the biggest challenge you see facing the university right now, and how do you plan to tackle that? Well, I, I think the biggest, we have several big challenges. You know, and, and the, the goals ahead for the university, the enrollment growth goal is a big challenge that we're, we're tackling as we speak. Um, raising the research stature of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln uh, into that next tier of great universities. I mentioned that we're a top 50 public research comprehensive university today. Um, I would like to see us in the decade ahead move into that top 35, potentially top 25 together with UNMC type of um, comprehensive research university. So there's a, there's a great challenge for us as we identify those areas that we're going to build upon and new areas that we have yet to build that are of importance to us. So those would be the two key things I would point out. And then of course, you know, no great place is going to be led without a great team. You know, it's going to take a team of people to lead this university forward. We're very fortunate to have a lot of very good people at this university already, but we've got to build a senior leadership team. You know, uh, uh, the president mentioned that I've been serving in two of the senior academic roles for the university this last year. Uh, we will begin working immediately uh, as we speak to fill both of those vice chancellor roles for academic affairs in the Institute of Ag and Natural Resources. Uh, that will be a big task ahead of us because we want the dream team here to come lead the university forward. You mentioned, if I can follow up, you mentioned you want to graduate students faster. Yes. Uh, student debt is a big problem, as everyone knows. Yes. What is, uh, what's the way that can be done? You're, not, you're going to get them out in three and a half well, years, when, three years? Yeah, during the campus visits about a month ago, we talked a lot about this. You know, the, the current six-year graduation rate for UNL is in the high 60 percent of first-time freshmen that enroll that graduate from UNL within six years. Much higher percentage of those students graduate from a university than that, but from UNL, 67 percent. I would like to see that number be 80 percent in four years. And that we can do that, I believe. We can do that through the way that we deliver the curriculum and the way we advise students. That requires you to take 15 credits per semester. You know, two times 15 times four equals 120. The Commit to Complete program, the university system has just launched that you heard our president talk about in the last few weeks. You know, that, that is the first approach, is to really get students done on time. Every additional semester that a student spends in school adds to that debt or adds to that total cost. So we'll be working very hard on that, that uh, metric alone in the coming years ahead. Additional questions? Yes, sir. What priority will you put on, um, I guess, uh, hiring females and minorities? So the question was what priority will be placed on hiring female faculty, female staff, uh, diverse faculty and staff, I might add to that, you know, in addition. Um, so you know, we, we certainly are, uh, are attentive to the need to diversify our faculty and staff as well as our students. 
You know, if you look at our current uh, ratio on gender in faculty or you look at our current ratios on, on minority or underrepresented minorities in our faculty, we're not where we want to be. Uh, we want to increase those numbers substantially to better reflect the population that is out there and we'll be placing emphasis, increased emphasis on that in our hiring processes and our search processes to attract that, that higher level of talent for both women, uh, gender and minorities. Ask, what was your, uh, how, were, how did you find out you got the job, and what was your, your gut reaction when you heard it? Phone call, and someone show up at your house, what, uh, <laughs> push notification? Uh, the president and I have been in discussion for some time uh, about the position, um, and, uh, and I'll just leave it at that. We've been talking for the last, you know, couple of weeks, and it's been a very good conversation. So, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, handshake, I guess you would call it, was in a meeting with Hank and I recently. Not by email, not by text, <laughs> not by phone. Got it? Thank you. He was in a very good meeting with the President. Additional questions. I know that we're anxious to talk to all of you, so we, we want to be able to talk to all of you, or as many of you as we can, before you leave today. I'll just again say what a privilege and an honor that it is to serve this institution. Uh, we look forward to the great days ahead, and I'm going to need every one of you pulling on the team with us, and I know that will happen. Thank you for the opportunity. So, so th thanks again for being here. Ronnie and his family will be at the front of the room. I know many of you will want to stop by and say hello, and uh, there are member of the, members of the media that would like to uh, conduct ind individual interviews. Ronnie, I assume you will make yourself available. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you, oh, there you are. <laughs>